Hey, good morning, everybody. Glad to see uh, that you are here, you know, on this, uh, what day is it? Uh, Tuesday. We are here in uh, November, you know, on the Tuesday, and here we go. Zags kicking off today, number one team in the country. Uh, you know, actually, I was talking to somebody yesterday. I said, I hope they lose, you know, once or twice earlier in the season so that they know what it's like to lose and to kind of work their way through. And they argue with me like, no, they need to win all their games. I'm like, I don't think they need to win all their games. I think they need to lose some, you know, in order for them to be ready. So um, I know it's raining today. Good morning, Cindy. You know, glad to see you're here. You know, uh, good morning, you know, uh, Colin, you know, go Zags. That's right. And uh, Daryl, thanks for being here as well. We are in Ephesians chapter two. So in Ephesians chapter two, we're starting in verse one. And so if uh, you got your Bibles, open them up, you know, so we can take a look at this. We're going to go through one through 10. And so uh, Paul, again, is writing to the church in Ephesus. And this church, you know, has a lot of issues. Guess what? Like all churches do. And there's a lot of jacked up people in these churches. And yet he's trying to give a sense of encouragement and purpose and hope. And I hope that this is encouraging for us this morning because I love, love, love this passage because it reminds us uh, where we've been, what Christ has done, and where we are now. Okay, that is the testimony that God gives us to be able to share with other people. Good morning, Jenny. Glad to see you here as well. And so where we've been, who we were, what Christ has done, and where we're going. Okay, so that's, that's the picture. Think about it in your own life. Who were you before Christ? What happened as you accepted Christ? Who are you now after you accepted Christ? And hopefully there's this transformation that's taken place. So with that in mind, you know, in Ephesians chapter two, verse one, it says, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. So again, we were dead in our transgressions. We were dead in our sins. Yet you used to live, by the way, sorry, you used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. So what he's saying is that one time we were dead. We had no control, you know, over, you know, our sinful lives. No matter how good we tried to be, you can't make up for the bad that you've done or said or thought, you know, or the things that you should have done and myself as well. We used to live that way, that Satan and his dominion and the forces of evil, you know, had reign over our lives as we see him have reign over much of the world. And it says, that's who we were. I, so you start thinking about who were you before Christ? What did you live for? How did you live? You know, how did you, you know, get along in life and some of the things that were, you know, a hindering and holding you back. And then my favorite is again, one of the other butts of the Bible. You know, I told you I might do a series called the butts of the Bible, uh, but verse four, but God, and this is the greatest part, but God is so rich in mercy that he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. So he says, this is what you were. This is how you were controlled. But God, not you, not me, but what he did because of his mercy, we deserve death. We deserve punishment. We deserve everything that was coming our way. But God is so rich in mercy and because of his love. We certainly forget it, but his love has loved us so much that even though we were dead, even though we deserved everything that was coming our way, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you've been saved. Verse six, for he raised us from the dead along with Christ. So again, the resurrection is what our faith is built on. The Bible points to the resurrection. Our faith, our primary faith is not built on the Bible. Our faith is built on Christ and the resurrection. The Bible points us to Christ and shows us that the resurrection is true. And so just make sure we have those, you know, in the right order. The Bible is incredibly important, but our faith, according to the Bible, is based on Christ rising from the dead. And because he raised from the dead, he gives us a chance to be raised from our death, which is our sin that separates us from God. And he seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. 
so we get a chance to be connected with Christ both now and for all eternity. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us as shown in all that he has done for us who are united with Christ. So again, what were we? Dead in our sins and transgressions. What happened? Christ was raised from the dead and gave us an opportunity and chance to be raised with him as well. And then God saved you by his grace when you believed. You can't take credit for this. It is the gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things that we have done so no one can boast about it. I love that because I too am a competitive person and I wanna say, well, look what I've done. And then somebody else goes, well, look what I've done. And none of those things is what creates a salvation opportunity for us. It only happens because of Christ Jesus. And then it says this, for we are God's masterpiece. Now that word masterpiece in the Greek is poema, which is the word where we get the English word poem from. And so we are God's poem, his poetry, you know, this beautiful masterpiece. He's created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. So what Paul is saying is he's not excusing us from ever doing things for God. In fact, he's compelling us, he's calling us, he's leading us to live for God, but that doesn't make us right with God. What makes us right with God is our connection with Christ. And so this whole first, first 10 verses is this is who you were. Remember that. Uh, sometimes, you know, we forget who we were and we, we kind of can look down on other people on where they are because they're not where we are. Let me say that one more time. We can look at other people who are not yet connected to Christ and it's very easy for us to look down on, to judge, to look with disgust or disdain, you know, or anger, you know, on the people who are not living. But then we, when we stop and reflect, that's who we were, it should create some compassion in us to be people who want to proclaim and help share the good news of Jesus Christ so that they can accept him and then become who they were created and meant to be in the same way that you and I are created and meant to be in Christ Jesus. You are a masterpiece. Let that sink in for just a second. You, your very life, you may not feel worthy, you may not feel good, you may not feel like you've done a lot of great things, you may not feel like you've got a lot of talents and gifts, but God looks at you and says you're a masterpiece and that you are created in Christ Jesus to do good works. He created us anew in Christ so he can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. So we do good because of what Christ has done for us, who we were, what happened, and who we are now as we continue to move forward. As I've tried to say over and over and over, may we reflect Christ to the non-Christian world. May we speak of Christ, talk about Christ, live as Christ, and now as Paul writes, serve as Christ to the world that doesn't know him. And as we do, may we always remember where we were, what Christ has done, and where we are now. Does it mean that we will never sin? No. Will we still struggle with sin? Yes. But are we dead to sin? Are we a slave to sin? No. We have the power of Christ in us to live the way that Jesus has called us to live. Are you still gonna make mistakes? Yes. Are you gonna still sin? Yes. But God, who is great in mercy, covers that. And then he chooses to use us as his masterpiece to then do good works. And so my prayer for this day is that you would feel encouraged and reflecting on who you were, on what Christ has done, and where you are seated now, and what you're able to do for him. Your works don't make you right before God, but our works demonstrate that we are his masterpiece. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much that we are created anew in you, that we are your masterpiece. Father, I just love that phrase, the poema of God. Help us, Father, just to, to live that way, to embrace the reality that we are not slaves to sin, that we are not dead in our transgressions. And even though we struggle and even though we are gonna fight you know, the temptations and the things that come along in this day, may we remember who we were, may we know what you have done to make us who we are, and may we live for you on this day with the opportunities to reflect your son Jesus in all of our interactions. 
It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey guys, have an incredible day. Uh, and uh, I will again see you tomorrow. We are jumping into verse 11. You know, probably going 11 to, through the verse 18, you know, uh, tomorrow as uh, we look and continue through the book of Ephesians. So um, love you guys. And uh, oh, I want to remind you just a couple things. You know, one is this Sunday night, we have our next worship night. This worship night is going to be pretty incredible. We're going to have, you know, uh, Trevor's going to share a testimony, you know, of some of the anxiety and depression that he's gone through. Sarah Yarborough, you know, is one of our counselors, going to kind of talk through, you know, some of the things that, that she knows can help us, you know, in times when we're feeling down and blue, you know, and we're, you know, in a season, you know, just not knowing which way and direction to go. And so just, just know, you know, it's just going to be a great opportunity for us to connect to the Lord together through song and through testimony. So uh, have a great day and uh, I will see you again tomorrow.